Good morning, friends. Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live. And the situation over in Ukraine, of course, has taken a heavy blow for the Russians and their advances that they've made. But uh, I need to remind you guys, listen, this is not over yet. And unfortunately for the people of Ukraine and those fighting in this battle there, it's only going to get bloodier. And I'm afraid that this war could actually spill over uh, out of the borders of Ukraine and into many more borders. Uh, so we're kind of watching this as close as we possibly can. And, uh, and the reason why I'm playing the video here in the background here for you right now as a, just as a reminder, Russia, you know, they have not. And this is something that I was told from very people close to the Joint Chiefs of Staff there that uh, Russia has not even yet even closely put on the battlefield anything that they actually have uh, of significance. We have. In fact, we have exposed our hands and our capabilities, and I was told that Russia is sharing that tech technology with China for a, a future war on the United States. And speaking of a future war on the United States, before I even go much further, uh, the Hindu Hindustan Times uh, was reporting this right here. Putin's military build up Russia nuke submarines fire missiles near the U.S. coast there. Yeah, you're looking at that right there. That is near... Uh, of course, it's the Alaskan coast, and we are we share a border very close with them as well. But they did it intentionally, showing uh, their military capabilities. They're firing tactical nuclear weapons there at targets as far as 400 kilometers away. Uh, so Russia is also making sure the United States knows that they've got a capability uh, not too far from our own mainland, and of course, vice versa. We would have the same in return there. Uh, but this situation in Ukraine, though, uh, could get much worse. We know that uh, right now uh, 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 the president of the United States, President Biden, has warned Putin not to use tactical nuclear weapons uh, in this war. And the reason why he is actually saying that is because of this uh, Twitter post here. And this Twitter post comes uh, from a uh, state run news agency there in uh, Ukraine, excuse me, in Russia, uh, where the commentator says the time has come for us to hold drills for practicing scenarios in which Russia's tactical nuclear weapons are used. We will soon be issued with a direct nuclear ultimatum from NATO. So, yeah, the, so the situation is getting very serious. It's very tense there. What's going on? And, uh, and it's not looking very good. Now, I want to remind you, though, we played this here from uh, former Senator Richard Black the other day in one of our videos there. And I want you to be able to rehear this once again, what Richard Black actually had to say. Let me make sure the volume's up because I turned it down here. Uh, because I'd like for you to hear what he has to say there, because this is exactly what we had reported. I knew this from inside sources inside uh, uh, Washington there that uh, Russia did not want this war to begin with. They were stopping uh, an Az Azov battalion, which is a neo-Nazi uh, battalion there to, that was getting ready to launch a major offensive against the Donbass region there. So listen to what Senator Black, uh, former Senator Black has to say on this. But uh, if, you, if you look at the way that this unfolded, President Putin made a desperate, effort to to stop the march towards war back in in december of 2021 he went so far as to put specific written proposals on the table with nato peace proposals to to defuse what was coming about because at this point ukraine was massing troops to attack the donbass uh, and that was never revealed and, uh, in the news, but we so revealed it. He was trying to head this off. He didn't want war. And uh, NATO just blew it off, just dismissed it, uh, never took it seriously, never went into serious negotiations. At that point, Putin, seeing that, uh, that armed Ukrainians uh, with weapons to kill Russian troops were literally on their borders, 
decided he had to strike first. Now, and that's what actually took place. He did strike first, and that's what brought about the turn in this. Now, of course, uh, you know, Ukraine is, like I said, they're getting the gains, uh, like in this particular video right here, uh, posted by a Ukrainian soldier there, uh, which you can tell they do have very late state-of-the-art uh, equipment fighting there. Uh, you know, as far as, you know, his headgear, things like that is the only thing I'm talking about as far as that there. Uh, but uh, they something has changed on that battlefield over there besides the fact that we know the Americans are fighting in there. I did the video on that just the other day there. They're definitely fighting there. This particular little uh, village here is basically just a little village. It's not really, they're making it look like it's a big gain there, but it's not a big gain there. Uh, he's in Debrova right here. If you zoom in, uh, and let's say if you went with a satellite view of the area right here, it's just a very, very little small town there. Um, you know, with just a handful of houses there. Probably You'd probably have a population of about 500. But nonetheless, it's significant gains. And even if you don't consider that, uh, and that is uh, going back to the main part of the map here, there's Luhansk to the east, Donetsk to the south. Uh, but Ukraine does have a massive uh, gr military group there in uh, Advika, which is right there on the outskirts of uh, the Donetsk, uh, um, city of Donetsk to begin with. And this is what the great concern is with those Ukrainians that live there that are facing an onslaught of uh, Ukrainian fighters, especially the, the neo-Nazi group there that is actually there ready to fight. Uh, in this video right here, uh, this was something I wanted to be able to share with you. Uh, this is where Putin is speaking about how that the West has constantly wanted to uh, dismantle Russia. Now, I actually happen to know uh, people that were part of that plan when the former Soviet Union was collapsed. Uh, I knew people that were involved with directly with uh, Pope John Paul at that time and uh, and how that they went about to bring about the collapse of the former Soviet Union. And uh, and yes, I am very much aware, well aware of, too, that they want to break up Russia into, I believe, six regions. They want to literally uh, bring a war against Russia, break it up into six regions. And Putin is a history buff. He knows what the plan is. And, uh, of course, as I've said before, I feel like he's also playing along in this uh, as well. But, uh, but at the same time, he plays his part. But at the same time, you know, you can see he doesn't want to see this happen to Russia. Uh, now, going back to the situation with Ukraine, though, the, 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 it is getting more desperate in the way Russia is bringing up their fighters. They brought in Chechnyans, etc., to fight in that. But now the Wagner Group, which is Russia's um, contracted military company there. Uh, and I had my wife listen to this video just to be sure that we were hearing it right. Uh, they're reaching out to prisoners for a service of six months. If they serve six months uh, in battle, they will get their freedom. Uh, and here's what is being said in here. I'm a representative of the private military company. You have probably heard of it. It's called the PMC Wagner. The war is hard. It can't be compared to Chechnya or anything like that, even remotely. The minimum age will take is 22 years old. Uh, if you're younger than that, you'll need a document from your closest relatives. Uh, that, uh, let's see, the maximum age conditionally, conditionally is 50 years uh, old. Of course, they'll take you older depending on what your health condition is. Right here are the interviews. We will conduct basic tests to see how fit you are. Uh, if you listen to the rest of this video, he also goes in there, the people who commit sex crimes, they don't really want them, uh, but he does say mistakes happen. That would really be a disaster for those people to get back on the streets, but they ain't no telling what these people are in, there, in the prisons for there. But they're being given the possibility of getting out of prison just for serving six months on the battlefield. And of course, he goes into the burial honors and things like that if they were to be killed in combat. Um, 
Uh, switching gears here. Let's see here if I want to switch the gears as of yet. Uh, let me just see real quick. I forgot exactly. Let's see. Russian state TV tell Putin to finalize plans. Yeah, for the nuclear show. I already did that. Yeah, so I don't no, no, really switching. Yeah, switching gears though. The I mentioned to you guys a little while back how that the sanctions that Russia had done um, uh, are the are that Russia cutting off the gas uh, the uh, their gas line to Europe was going to be used to leverage against uh, the for the people to go against the government to back off on this war with NATO. Uh, so we had this article here that came out in the Alamayadeen. Germany fears inevitable bankruptcy amid energy crisis. Talk about putting pressure on Germany. Now, this is basically what the West has done to Russia. They have put them under such crippling sanctions over the years here that they've nearly brought Russia completely down. And what Putin has done instead was to build other ties with other nations, cutting the United States out, building their ties with China and, and uh, <clears throat> over there in India and uh, different countries like that. And also the, uh, the uh, Middle Eastern nations. And at the same time in doing so, uh, they've been building up their military. But this is what the article speaks about. In a tweet on Thursday, Germany left-wing politician and chairman of the uh, Budstag Committee on Energy, Klaus Ernest, uh, referenced statements by Chancellor Olaf Scholz that the sanctions should not hit Europe harder than Russia itself. We have now imposed seven packages of sanctions uh, and Gazprom is making record profits. At the same time, we are threatened with a wave of bankruptcies, therefore negotiate with Russia with an open mind, he says. The largest EU economy has anticipated a contract in 2023 as gas and electricity prices continue to skyrocket, according to the IFO Institute for Economic Research. In Munich, <clears throat> the base think tank and ongoing energy crisis as a result of the war in Ukraine is wreaking havoc on the German economy and the project it could lead to up to a 0.3% drop in the GDP next year. Now you have to understand, the reason why this is so serious, not just for Germany, but for Europe as a whole. Germany, since uh, Great Britain left the EU, now Germany is the one that carries the entire financial backbone of the entire European Union. If Germany folds, all Europe will fold with it. And so, therefore, it was a brilliant move, as it was said by one of the people in Washington there to me. It was a brilliant strategy that Putin used when he decided to use his own form of sanctions on Europe to try to get a peace negotiation. And from what I understand, that's what Putin is wanting. He wants a peace negotiation. Uh, and again, look at there, Austria-Hungary accept Russian conditions on gas supplies. So you've got two countries that are actually making agreements with Russia. So Germany Energy Company, uh, Uniper, has stated that the suspension of the Russian gas supplies to Poland will not affect the transit through the Yamal Europe gas pipeline to Germany. According to the Austrian Chancellor Karl uh, Nehemiah, Austria has accepted Russia's conditions on payment for gas supplies in rubles. Russian energy giant Gazprom announced on Wednesday that it had comple uh, completely uh, suspended gas supplies to Bulgaria's largest natural gas distribution company and Bulgargas and Polish oil and gas company P, uh, PGNIG as the companies failed to pay for gas in rubles. So, yes, again, I hate to say it, but it is brilliant. And uh, I know a lot of people, listen, uh, let me clarify one thing too here in closing on our broadcast here. I do not support communism one single bit. But you need to be reminded though how Russia became a communist nation. How many of you, of course, it's long before our time, but when Russia was ran by the Tsars of Russia, Russia was a so-called Christian nation. They were very big into evangelizing. They evangelized as the countries south of their border, including China, being one of their main uh, countries that they were evangelizing before China became a communist nation. But you see, there were certain groups 
that did not want that happening. And so the only way to overthrow the Tsars of Russia was to bring in communism. And Lenin and Stalin brought that in. They brought that in. And of course, both these men were Jewish. And I'm going to be teaching very soon again on Danun Institute. We'll put 30-second clips here on Israeli News Live. But I need to really break it down so you see how biblical prophecy that was fulfilled is being used for a modern-day takeover of the world. And just think about it. Why are they wanting to take over the world? Well, their king is coming. And it's not Jesus Christ either. They're bringing back their Draco king when Planet X comes. It's another reason why you have the red heifers all brought into Israel. There is scripture that's been fulfilled that they're trying to apply to a modern day scenario. This is why they want a new world order, is to put you under their thumb. I guess we forgot that Jesus Christ come to liberate the people of God, not put us back into bondage. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day. Uh, please, if you would, don't forget, if God lays it upon your heart, it's top of the video. Our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can go there and you could donate. Uh, our, our mailing address also is above the video, but right there you can click online and, and be able to donate directly online. And um, uh, also our videos that are on iConnect also appear on our website. Some of those are translated in multiple languages, depending on the importance of that. And in the video description below is how you can go to EMPShield.com and be able to get an EMP shield. I do strongly encourage that with all the scenarios that we're facing with wars. Anything could happen. An electric magnetic pulse for your vehicle to make sure you can get home safely in the event something like that were to take place. Or in the case of electrical strikes with all these strange storms that we keep having, having and stuff. Wouldn't be a bad idea, but don't forget you need to use your INL code INL50 uh, because when you go to EMPShield.com, and I'll just quickly put that website in there for you so you can see what I'm talking about just in closing. I haven't spoke about this in a couple of weeks here, but when you are shopping, and let's say you do decide you need that for your vehicle, uh, and you're going to add that to your cart, yes, 389 but when you add it, if you use the coupon code INL50, once you go to the cart, doesn't matter how many you buy. If you bought 30 of these items uh, from their website, uh, you use that code right there, INL50. Every single item will be given a $50 discount in doing so. And, uh, and of course, they also give a small uh, donation to our ministry as well. So you save their 339 and it also helps to support the work we do. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.